Live your life with passion, with some drive. Most people give up on themselves easily. You know the human spirit is powerful? There's nothing as powerful. It's hard to kill the human spirit. Motivation, a reason for actions, willingness, and goals. What reasons are there to be willing to act towards your goals? One concept is talking about the difference between positive and negative motivation. When you are negatively motivated, you are motivated by pain. So you are trying to run away from something that you don't want anymore. Instead, when you are positively motivated, you are motivated by pleasure. You are steering towards a reward, something that you want in your life. There is for example Jaden, who is working a 9 to 5 job that he hates. He doesn't like the work and therefore he's trying to build his own business. But there's also Steve. He loves technology. It brings him joy, so therefore he founded the company Apple. You might ask, what's the difference? Both are motivated, so that's fine, but it's not that easy. See, Jaden is motivated by his pain that he experiences at his job. That gives him a great reason to work on his business, but after he finally quits his job, he experiences no pain anymore. And guess what? His motivation drops because it was tied to his pain. So he will slack off at some point until his business is not doing as well anymore. Fear and pain kicks in again and maybe he even has to apply for a job again. But luckily with the rising pain, motivation comes back again. He works hard in his business again, so the story simply repeats. The company will never be a real success on the long run because as soon as Jaden is doing good, he loses the drive again. Steve, on the other hand, is not running away from anything. He simply loves his business. He's driven by his positive motivation. He doesn't stop after releasing his first iPhone. He certainly doesn't stop after releasing the iPhone too. He just keeps going because he enjoys it. I'm convinced that the only thing that kept me going was that I loved what I did. You've got to find what you love. And that is as true for work as it is for your lovers. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life, and the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking and don't settle. As with all matters of the heart, you'll know when you find it. Now, obviously his motivation is not a straight line, but taking the big picture, he's much more motivated on the long run, and that's what you want for your life as well. More examples. You are overweight and you don't want to feel embarrassed anymore. The result is the classical yo-yo effect. Versus, you love being healthy and ripped, you enjoy sweating and training your willpower. Or your relationship is full of fights and stress. You don't want that anymore and you cut off your partner. You're motivated to meet a new partner, but as soon as you are in a relationship and everything is going fine, you get lazy. Versus, you are looking for a deep and mature love. The theory sounds all good, but how do we practically let go of this negative motivation? and instead gain a strong positive motivation. How do we get motivated at all? Because we all know that reality is waiting for us out there and sometimes it's very easy to lose the drive. Telling yourself every day, here I go again, and I got what it takes. This is my day 
and nothing out here is going to stop me. And when you go out there, life say, come over here. <laughs> say it again. Well, I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> Now, most likely you're not able to simply let go of this negative motivation within a couple of days. It's a very tangible feeling and that's even okay. Don't try to push it away because if you do that, you're negatively motivated about the negative motivation. I don't want that negative motivation anymore. So that doesn't work by itself. Actually, every negative motivation is always a valuable message. Thank you for letting me know. I don't feel good in my job right now. I don't feel good in my body right now. Whatever it is for you, that's actually great. And it's a valuable message, especially if you know that you can change something. So use that as a fuel. But based on that, you don't just want to mindlessly run away from something. You also want to reflect a little bit on that. So ask yourself the question, why is this important to me? Why do I not want this anymore? And what am I afraid of? What if nothing changes? What, what, what is happening there? And what does this all say about me? Am I not feeling good enough or what is going on? Journal about it, reflect on it. And based on that, now you want to really focus on your positive vision because this is giving you the motivation on the long run. What is the thing that you love and you value and you think is important? What is the passion behind? What is the clear vision? What do you want? Be very clear about that. How do you want to feel? Who do you want to be? Define that very clearly because your passion and the thing that you love, that's really the deepest and biggest leverage for motivation, especially on the long run. People say you, you have to have a lot of passion for what you're doing and it's totally true. And the reason is, uh, is because it's so hard that if you don't, any rational person would give up. It's really hard. And you have to do it over a sustained period of time. So if you don't love it, if you're not having fun doing it, and you don't really love it, uh, you're going to give up. And that's what happens to most people, actually. If you really look at, 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 at the ones that uh, ended up you know, being successful, unquote, in the eyes of society and the ones that didn't, oftentimes it, it's the ones that are successful loved what they did so they could persevere when, you know, when it got really tough. And, and the ones that, that didn't love it quit because they're sane, right? Who would want to put up with this stuff if you don't love it? Now, defining what you love is a slightly different topic. It's more about finding a life purpose. And I shot another documentary about this topic here. I really want to stay with motivation. But the fundamental key and idea of finding a purpose behind your goal that's the key to feel motivated. It's about defining and starting with your why. People usually worry about the what and the how first. I need to make money and how the hell am I doing this? But stop here and ask yourself, what is the underlying reason? Behind every goal is a feeling. You don't want a big house. You maybe want to feel full of abundance. You don't want to do sports. You want to feel healthy and fit. Why pay the price? Why work this hard? Why go this far? Why try to learn this much? Why try to do it all? That's a good question why. And you're the only one personally that can answer that question for yourself. You've got to have your own list of whys. If the why is powerful, the how is easy. So write down an appealing vision. And when you're done with that, then you can ask yourself what needs to get done to fulfill this vision. Maybe you realize to feel free, you can simply travel for a year instead of trying to build a $1 million company. Take the shortcut if possible. But write down your tangible input of what needs to get done. Be specific because energy flows where attention goes. You see, if you don't have a vision of where you go and if you don't have a goal where you go, you drift around and you never end up anywhere. It's like you can have the best ship in the world, you can have the best airplane in the world. If the pilot or the captain doesn't know where to go, 
it would just drift around. It would not end up anywhere or most likely in the wrong place. And at the very last step, you can build a strategy and ask yourself, how do I reach my goal? But don't major in minor things. Don't overly focus on the how if the why is not even clear yet. Setting goals is plain hard work. I don't want to kid you. We haven't come here tonight to kid each other. It's work. I know it's work. That's why a lot of people just let it slide. It's work. And the work involved is making plans. I know most people don't. I understand that. But don't let that be you. And there will be times when you don't feel like it. You don't feel like taking the next step. Expect that. If you treat yourself like a machine, you will never arrive. Tackle your weaknesses in a mature way. Be mindful about yourself. Decide when it's time to go all out and when it's time to recover. Life is dynamic. Life always changes. And at some point, you might find yourself totally losing your motivation for one of your goals. Then it's time to ask yourself whether the why is still strong enough. Or did you evolve and transcend that why? Did I change? Of course you did, because you are a dynamic individual and motivation is dynamic. Life is like surfing. You need to adjust to the changes if you want to stay on top of the game. And you need to remember the big picture. Why do you want that motivation? Because you want to be happy. And happiness is not necessarily about mindlessly chasing something all the time. It's about enjoying the journey and taking it all in. DC and Ryan are psychologists who talk about enjoying and being interested in the work itself. So you enjoy the process and you enjoy the journey and they call it intrinsic motivation. The opposite is extrinsic motivation. You're doing it because of some external consequences. You want the car, the girl, the money or other people are pushing you to do so. And here the work becomes a means to an end. You don't really enjoy it, you just do it to get some consequences, some external consequences, or you're avoiding external consequences. And DC and Ryan also state that intrinsic motivation is not only more joyful, but also you're more motivated on the long run and you actually get better results. And they also say, it's not just about finding something that you like, finding a task you like. No, it's actually much more about three basic psychological needs that need to be met within you. And you can create the circumstances in your life that those psychological needs are met and then you feel this intrinsic motivation. So you are motivated from within and you're not running after somebody or something outside of you. So it takes self-motivation to really alter your life. And you don't want to give self-motivation away to somebody else and make it somebody else motivating you. The guy says, boy, if somebody just come by and turn me on, what if they don't show up? Right? <laughs> See, you've got to have a better plan for your life. The first psychological need is about feeling a sense of competence. What is often happening is that people feel unclear about their tasks they are not fully clear about what needs to get done. It's just overwhelming and this is what makes them feel stressed. And obviously, when you are stressed, you are trying to avoid it and you start to procrastinate. Now, if you want to feel a sense of competence, you want to turn this unclarity into clarity. You could do this, for example, by picking the optimal challenge for you. If it's too easy, it's underwhelming so you don't feel competent as well. But if it's too hard, you don't really know what needs to get done, so you also don't feel competent. So pick the optimal challenge, where you still need to struggle, but you are able to figure out and get clear about the next steps. Now, maybe you say, I can't pick my challenge, it is just difficult, and that's the way it is. Then seek feedback from people who give you relevant and encouraging feedback. Maybe even get a coach. 
somehow get help so you create clarity in your life and you know what the next steps are. The second psychological need is about feeling a sense of relatedness. Working on a lonely island without any contact will suck you out of your joy. Surround yourself with people in your industry or who follow the same interests. Have fun together, yes, but also engage in meaningful and deep conversations. If you feel a sense of connectedness, you are much more willing to go through difficult times. You're doing it with and for others. And the third psychological need is about feeling a sense of autonomy. Reconnect to your why and your vision. Why is this important to you? If you remember that, you will feel a sense of autonomy again. Maybe you think, yes, I don't really like this job right now, but I'm doing this so I can live my dream on the long run. So I choose to do this job right now. Also, build a repertoire of choices for yourself. If you need to do sports today and you have an opportunity list and you can decide between going for a run, playing football or going to the gym, you feel autonomous. And by the way, you can use this framework to allow people around you to also feel intrinsically motivated. Give them some relevant and positive feedback, care about them, reconnect them to their why, just to give you a couple of examples. By creating such a fruitful environment, people will be able to motivate themselves. And if you feel like you lost passion for something that you actually enjoy, maybe one of those three needs are not sufficiently met at this point. And the question would be, how can you satisfy this need? There are so many more things one could talk about the topic of motivation. And when I talk with my clients about this topic and they want to gain motivation, we often realize though, Ooh, I don't actually want motivation. I simply want to achieve a specific goal. Okay, so why don't we just build a couple of straightforward habits with more ease? Motivation gets you going, but habits keep you going. You don't need to be motivated every single day. Try to push yourself in new directions. Take the bigger picture. What is going on? What is the big picture here? You don't want to burn out yourself. That's not the name of the game. Be a bit more wise. I mean, you want to be motivated to live a good life. So don't be busy with pushing yourself all the time, but be effective and think what is, what is the core and how can I reach my true desire, my true goal with much more ease.